Hello family. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good morning. Good night. Wherever you are in the world. I want to welcome you to Easy Mass Tutor. So I'm gonna solve some past questions for us for physics. Now this is actually Neko, but it's also similar to our wired questions. So we're gonna solve the objective section. Now this section is made up of 50 questions and some options. So when you solve the questions, you have to select an option. So the first question, which of the following sets of SI unit is fundamental only? Now we know what fundamental and derived units mean. Fundamental unit is a basic unit that contains only one unit or entity, while a derived unit contains two or more units. So the first option is amp, mole, and meter square. Now, because of meter square, you cannot choose this option. Second is CD, mole, and Kelvin. Next one is Newton, candela, meter per second. This is off. Newton, meter cube, meter per second square. This is off. Second, Joule and Kelvin. Because of the Joule, it's off. Because Joule consists of about two or three other quantities. So our correct answer will be B. Our question two. Which of the following bodies exhibits translational and rotational motions simultaneously? Now we know what translational motion is. It's a motion from one point to the other. While rotational motion has to do with circular motion or periodic motion or moving, um, rotating from a fixed point. Now the first option says, A, B, hovering over a flower. Now the axis that the body should exhibit both translational and rotational motion simultaneously. Now B, hovering over a flower is basically random motion. B, book sliding down in an inclined table, that's translational motion. C, cylinder rolling down an inclined plane, that is actually rotational and translational. Then we have stone thrown vertically upward, that is translational motion. Then the wheel moving on a circular track. A wheel moving on a circular track. I think I'll take C. I think I'll take C because C means a cylinder rolling down. If you have a cylinder, right? A cylinder rolling down, right? Now this cylinder will also rotate at the same time it will move from one point to the other. So I think C sounds more correct than E. Okay. Then we have the third question. Which of the following statement is not correct about velocity? Now our A option says A. It's a vector quantity. Remember, we're selecting the option that is not correct. B, the time rate of change of displacement. Time rate of change of displacement. That's correct. A vector quantity is correct. The time rate change of displacement, correct. C, measured in meter per second. That's the unit correct. The speed measured in a given direction. Is correct. E uniform round a circular path. That is wrong. So E is a correct answer. So we're moving on to question four. Now the question says calculate the total distance.
covered during the motion represented in the velocity time graph shown below. Now, when you see a graph plotted velocity versus time, that's called a velocity time graph. And then we should know that the area under this graph is known as the total distance covered by the object in motion. So we're asked to find the total distance covered during the motion presented. So this object is actually a trapezium. So we're going to find the area of this trapezium. So we know that the area of a trapezium of a trapezium is equal to half, right? Of the length, the two lengths, which is let's say L1 plus L2, right? Times the height. So we know, according to this graph, we'll call this part L1, we'll call this part L2, call this part the height. Now we know the height is, first of all, right half. L1 is 5, okay? The length is 5. L2, the length is 8. And H is 10. So we have 1 over 2. 5 plus 8 gives us 13 times 10. So if we cancel 2 here, cancel 10, 5. So we have 13 times 5, which will give us 65. So our answer is D. Our answer is D. So now we have our question 5. Two vectors... 10 Newton West and 15 Newton East originated from the same point. Calculate their resultant. Okay. Now let's draw it because we have to draw the diagram. We'll draw a line which will show us the north, east, west, and south. So we know this is the east, while this is the west. This is the north, while this is the south. Two vectors. 10 Newton West. So we'll measure a vector going in this direction, 10 Newton. And the second vector is going 15 Newton East. Calculate the resultant. All right. So now we know we have a greater force which is going on the east. So we have 15 East. They are going in opposite direction, so we're going to subtract, okay? 10 west, 10 west, 10 newton west. 15 minus 10 will give us 5, so we'll choose east because east is more. So we'll have 5 newton east, so our answer will be B. Now, number six, the question says an object weighs 0 0.25 newton in air and 0 0.21 Newton when fully immersed in water. Calculate the relative density of the object. Calculate the relative density of the object. Okay, so I think the relative density will be the weight of the object in air all over the weight of the object in water all right so that will be 0 0.25 all over 0 0.21 so we use our calculator so we use our calculator we have 0 0.25 divided by 0 0.21 and our answer will be 1.19 so number seven Two forces of magnitude 25 Newton and 16 Newton are inclined at an angle of 120 degrees to each other. Calculate the magnitude of their resultant. So we're going to use a diagram, right? So the first angle is, to, is I said it's inclined, right? It's inclined. Okay, so it's going to be, so it's going to be like something like this. This is 120 degrees right one angle is what inclined at what 
25 newton while the other is at 60 newton okay so the resultant the resultant force I'm going to use the parallelogram law of vectors now using the parallelogram law of vectors we apply this formula which is the two sides the two vectors p squared plus q squared plus 2pq cos 120 degrees which is the angle theta so let's calculate it when you key in your values into the calculator which is the square root of 25 square plus 16 square plus 2 25 times 16 cos 120 degrees our answer will be 21.93171 so we've come to the end of this session of um, solving physics past questions in preparation for our YEC theory and objective examinations coming up soon so i'll see you in my next video thank you for watching and god bless you